In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how well Chronosculpt can fit into your pipeline by showing you the workflow and interchange tools. To demonstrate this, we're going to create a problematic simulation inside of Lightwave, correct that simulation in Chronosculpt, and then finish it in Maya. This tutorial is based off of a written tutorial inside of the November 2013 issue of 3D Artist Magazine. So if you're following along from that point, great. If not, you can still follow along. First, let's open up the object. So here we have a blocks layer and a ball layer. And if you don't have these assets, you can just model them in Modeler. Let's select the box layer and rest it right on top of the ground. And let's raise the ball up. Get it into place. So what we're going to try to do is apply bullet dynamics to these three objects. And we want to create a simulation where uh, one block falls off the edge of this. And let's say the director or the supervisor loved everything about the simulation um, of the blocks except he didn't want that one block to fall off the edge. What we're going to do in Chronosculpt is then correct that error that the director or supervisor may have not wanted, and we're not even going to touch the rest of the simulation. We're then going to get it into Maya. Now this is where Chronosculpt is really handy because we're only going to correct that one error for that one block without even touching the rest of the simulation. So let's go up to FX Tools with the ball selected, and we're going to apply rigid bodies to that. Select the box, and let's apply parts bodies to those because these are all individual boxes. Select the ground plane, and let's give that a static body. So you can see already, if we skip to the last frame, that we do have a simulation occurring. Now we haven't even touched any of these settings, so let's open up the world properties. And this is where we can adjust all the settings and create that problematic simulation that we are looking for. So you notice first that the boxes are moving slightly before the ball gets to them. We can correct that by going to the blocks and under item, go to the activation tab and let's say start sleeping. Now the blocks won't move until the ball hits it. We can adjust some other settings such as the glue strength and maybe lower that to about 1% and even the braking angle make that 0.5 pretty low. So you can see that our simulation is looking a lot better now. We're getting closer to having the blocks slide off the edge. I'm gonna skip ahead here and let you play with the settings and I'll show you what I have in a second. So after a few minutes of playing around and adjusting a few settings, here's what I have. You can see that we have one block over here that falls off the edge, and that's the one that we're going to correct. Because in this situation, the director may like everything about the simulation except for that one error, and that's where Chronosculpt is gonna come into play. So now what you have to do is get this motion data of these objects into Chronosculpt. And to do that, we're going to use a LightWave native file format uh, known as MDD. So let's go back to frame zero. And with the blocks layer selected, open up the object properties panel. And let's go to the deform tab, add displacement, and let's add MD Baker. Double click on that. We want the file format to be MDD, first frame zero, and for my simulation, the last frame is going to be 45. And specify where you want to save it, and then click OK. We're going to do the same thing for the ball layer. P for object properties, deform tab, add displacement, MD Baker, and same settings. MDD, first frame zero, last frame 45, and hit OK. We don't need to create an MDD for the ground plane because that's going to be static in both Chronosculpt and Maya. We only needed to apply a static body to it in Lightwave so it could act as a collision object. So now that we have the motion data files for the ball and the blocks, 
We now need to package up our scene into a file format that we can take into Maya. To do that, I wanted to use an FBX file. So we can go up to File, choose Export, and Export FBX. Let's uncheck Cameras, Lights, Animations, leave Models checked, and we can uncheck Morphs. And let's leave the Materials and Embedded Textures on. The type Binary is fine, and FBX 2011 is also fine. Specify where you want to save it, and just hit OK. So now we have everything we need from Lightwave's layout. Let's go ahead and jump into Chronosculpt. In Chronosculpt, we can very easily import the files by simply having the folder opened and dragging them directly into the interface. Chronosculpt supports LWO files, so go ahead and import that same object. Then with the blocks layer selected, let's go to the blocks MDD, click and drag that directly into the interface. Now we need to cycle through the different layers to get to the ball. We can do that by hitting Control tab so you can see that now we have the ball selected. And let's click and drag the sphere MDD onto it. If we scrub to the timeline, you can see that we now have the same exact simulation that we had inside of Lightwave. Let's shorten the timeline to 45 frames, because that's as long as the cache file is. And now we want to correct that one block falling off the edge, the one thing about this simulation that the director did not like. So let's get to the point right before the block falls off the edge, and we're going to use a tool called Pin. So select Pin, and hit Control tab to cycle to the blocks layer. And if we hover over that block, you'll see we get a nice brush. Let's just click on top of that block, or if you have a group of them, you can brush over them. And you'll see on the timeline that we now have a red pin morph. You can come to the beginning of it to shorten it or make it longer. I'm going to shorten it slightly, and let's go to about here, and you can see that now it will stop at that point. Let's make it a little longer, and even add a bit of ease in by using these Bezier handles over here. So you can see that as I adjust these, they interactively adjust on the timeline. So now if I scrub through from the beginning, that air is now fixed. And it's really as easy as that, and you can do this with multiple blocks as well. So now what we want to do is get this shot into Maya. In Chronosculpt, we can export Maya cache files that we can then import into Maya to get this same exact motion data onto our objects. So let's go to frame zero, and let's go to File, and Save Maya Cache. Now, it's important to use no hyphens when exporting these Maya cache files because Maya does not like hyphens. So use a very simple name just like sphere and blocks. Keep it simple. Then cycle through to the ball layer, file, save Maya cache again. Now just like in Lightwave, we don't need to export a Maya cache for the ground plane since it won't be moving. Once you have those Maya cache files exported, it's time to jump into Maya. So here we are at the final step inside of Maya 2014, and the first thing we want to do is import that FBX that we created inside of Lightwave. So let's go to File, Import, and let's click on this little box here to open up the import options. We want to make sure that the file type is set to FBX. Then select Import, FBX bullet block smash, and import. You can see inside of Maya that we are now able to select all three objects. Let's hit the 5 key to go into shading view, and you can see that we do have all of our textures as we did inside of Lightwave and Chronosculpt. Let's select the ball, and let's apply the Maya cache to this object. Make sure you're under the animation menu set, and under geometry cache, let's import it, my cache sphere very simple name open that 
And you can see that we have our animation. I'll talk about why it's raised up a bit in a second. And now let's select the blocks layer. Same thing, import the cache, blocks, and open that. So you can see that everything is raised off of the ground a little bit. The timing is correct, but it's raised off the ground. And the reason it's doing that is because in Chronosculpt, the Maya cache was baked in world space, resulting in the transformation being applied twice inside of Maya. An easy way to fix this is to simply select the ball, and under the XYZ coordinates, just change that to zero. Select the blocks, and do the same thing for the blocks. Now if we scrub through the timeline, you can see that everything is perfectly there as we would expect it. And you can see that that one error is corrected. So let's recap for a second. We created a simulation in Lightwave, the director wanted a slight change, and we were able to quickly fix it in Chronosculpt and send to Maya, all within a very short amount of time. I hope you guys learned a lot from this tutorial about the workflow and the interchange tools of Chronosculpt and how powerful it could be for your pipeline. And I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with.